he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. To be under someone's shadow, naturally, we need to be very close to them. Again, in this part of Psalm 91, we understand the idea of closeness, to be together, in communion, because God offers protection for those who have communion with Him. How can we approach God? Is it possible to be far from God once He is everywhere? God says that He is Almighty. He says, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If He is omnipresent, aren't they all under His shadow? Not necessarily. Why? Because God's omnipresence does not mean that the person is accepting his conditions, that he may interfere in their decisions. It's important The human beings, you, must understand something sacred that God gave to the human being, which not even him interferes with, called one's own will. When you were born, you were given a will of your own, and this will is developing since you were a child. And when the child reaches adolescence, they want to express the independence of their will. This process is quite frustrating for most parents because as long as the child is a kid, basically we control the life of the child completely, what they eat, what they dress, where they go, but they get to an age that they learn that they have their own freedom and we can no longer control them. And then the frustrations begin of all parents, usually mothers. But just as we are frustrated with our children when they don't do our will, and they discover that they have their own, the same is with God. He created us as beings with our own will. And He respects this will. So he does not impose himself on anyone. And many people fall for that famous question. If God is good and power, if he is a God who is omnipresent, omniscient, and if he is good, why does he allow evil in the world? Why does he allow suffering, innocent people to suffer? Well, it seems like an intelligent question, but it isn't when you understand that it is incompatible with having the freedom to do what you want and at the same time having a God who will protect you from that freedom. Either he gives you freedom or he interferes in your life. Because people typically do not want God's interference, they go on with their freedom. And in their freedom, they do things that causes them problems and to others too. God only interferes in human life when He is invited to do so. Did you understand? Did you hear well? I will repeat. God only interferes in human life when he is invited to do so. So, if you want to be under the shadow of the Almighty, you must make yourself close to God by deciding to surrender your will to Him and be close to God so that He has access to your life, that He may interfere in your life allowing him not only in moments of danger, in moments that you need help, but at all times. So, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. How many 
would love to have this abode. Nowadays, the great pharmaceutical laboratories are becoming poor rich, making so much, so much money. Do you know with what? Sleeping pills, tablets to calm anxiety, to keep the person calm, to slow the person down, they are making loads of money because the human beings becoming more and more anxious and restless. They lay their head on their pillow and they can't sleep. And they learn, if I take this pill, I will black out in five minutes. Max 10 minutes, I will black out in deep sleep. So the person takes a little medicine today, they have a wonderful night, and guess what they will do on the next night? The same. But they create a dependence, and at the same time, they stop working with the same dose, the person needs to increase the dose. And you know where this will end. This creates a dependence. And other side effects happen too. So nowadays people don't rest. They don't have inner peace. They can't sleep well. They don't have calmness within them. They live anxious, restless, why? Because they are outside the shelter of the Most High. They are outside the shadow of the Almighty. When you are close to God, you rest. There may be a war around you, but you are at peace. Because people can take away everything you have on the outside. But no one can take away what you have inside you unless you allow it. But you have control on what you think, what you believe in, you decide. So those who have decided to be under the shadow of the Almighty rest. They have peace, a calm night, they have peace of mind to work, they are at ease and pass that peace onto other people, which doesn't mean they don't have problems, which doesn't mean that they are not at war. They are, but inside they are at peace. This is the promise of God to those who dwell in his shelter. And the psalm goes on. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Note that on these two first verses of Psalm 91, the psalmist gives four attributes, four names to God. First, he calls Him Most High. There's no one higher than Him. There's nothing above God. There are no stars, planets, sky, darkness, there's not even air above God, nothing, absolutely nothing that is higher than Him. He is the true Supreme, the Supreme Heavenly Court. He is the Supreme Heavenly Court. There's no one higher than Him. He is the highest, the highest, the greatest. He is Almighty, which does not mean that He does everything randomly. God can do everything, but He cannot contradict Himself. God cannot lie, for example. It's impossible for God to lie. So there are impossibles for God. Yes, there are. I spoke about one already here. It's impossible that He disrespect your own will. Why will God throw a few people in hell? Because they decided to. No, it's not possible. Nobody wants to go to hell. Yes, you choose hell as the other destination for your soul when you reject God's salvation. So those who do not want to do God's will on earth, He will do the will of this person for eternity, which is to stay away from that person. So God cannot interfere with your will, God cannot lie, God cannot contradict Himself. Did you understand? 
He cannot go against his own law. He cannot do that. Because he is almighty does not mean that he will do things randomly just because he can. When the devil said to Jesus, throw yourself down, using Psalm 91, by the way, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up. Jesus could have done that. He could, but he didn't. Because he is not there to show off. God is not ostentating his power. God is subject to his own laws. And these laws, he respects them. And we must fit these laws to receive his help too. So, Most High, Almighty, Lord, I'll say of the Lord, a common name used anyhow out there. The people do not understand that God is Lord. Lord of whom? Those who are his servants. God is Lord of those who serve him. Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Because they say, Lord, Lord, but they don't do what I ask. So if you don't do what God asks, he's not your Lord. Do not forget this. He is Lord of those who obey him. And the fourth, he is my God. He is my God. There's no other God but him. There's no Mary, John, Muhammad. There's no Mary. There's no priest A, B, or C. None. There's only God. He's the only Lord. My refuge, my fortress in him, I will trust. So if you haven't chosen him as your Lord, only and true God, do it. Because if this is not true in your life, forget the rest of Psalm 91. Do not recite beautiful words just because they sound nice. These words are true. And that they may be fulfilled in your life, first you must fulfill the conditions from this psalm. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.